Hello and welcome everybody, I'm Proper Variant of this Crusader Kings 2 and I hope that I'm finally getting rid of this popping noise that has been established because I changed my computer setup, my second screen is now on the left side instead of the right side, meaning the mic also switched and all of a sudden I have this pop 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 sound, I hope that that is gone starting this episode, but I can't guarantee it, I will continue to work on it. Now either way, we have had a pretty good campaign so far. Strategos Radagaisus is already 32, how did that happen? I swear to god, just two minutes ago he was about 20, maybe even like... 15, something like that anyway, and all of a sudden he's 32, and he is a pretty decent ruler over all the land that is now un under the control of the Pyrogonus dynasty in the P Byzantine Empire. We do, of course, have Austrasia, and I love Austrasia. The fact that King Jacobos the Mule established himself the way that he did is incredible to me, although I fear that Prince Chiandas Chindasuinto will do fairly fairly poorly but we will see about it not today maybe not tomorrow but in the future and I think this episode will be very heavy of you know essentially just fast forwarding because we're going to build up a bit my plan is to build tall and that includes now that we can build tall in Crimea and in Kherson because both of those provinces will never be looted so let's just start with that by essentially building a city somewhere I think over here that's a good spot right there we will build a city and we will make sure that all of this territory will be prosperous Wake up and go to the window to greet the sun and then suddenly realize that your castle garden has been neglected for years and turned into an overgrown and chaotic disgrace. Their weeds are, the weeds are knee high and vines are making it almost impassable without having a sword at hand. Something needs to be done about this. You know what? I'll make sure to make this a real garden with a glorious hedge maze. Absolutely. It's hard work to clean out all the weeds from a huge garden. It will take many days and nights for hard labor, of hard labor to finish the prepar a preparatory work before you can even begin to grow the hedge maze. I'll do it myself. Let's go! Diligent. Easy. Now that the hedges are planted and you just need to wait for them to grow, you turn your attention to other details that your garden needs. Should you add some statues to the dead ends of your maze? Some statues would be very nice. We are greedy, but honestly, our dynasty so far has been fairly proud, just as a hereditary trait, so to speak. I'll add some beautiful statues of religious figures. Maybe, but this opinion boost isn't enough to, uh, to impress me. You know what? We're gonna build statues of my family. During this evening's council meeting, Ecclesiarch Theoctistos told us a rumor he had encountered. The peasants speak of an artifact hidden not far away from here. The specifics of Theoctistos' information are uncertain, but perhaps this would be worth investigating. Absolutely. The hedge maze and garden are finally finished. The expensive and exclusive details you added have not gone unnoticed, and your garden has gained fame for its magnificence across many realms. While creating the garden, you also learned much about how to make things grow and flourish around you. Flowers as well as relationships. I like to see things flourish. That is so cute. I, uh, so rarely do I pick up the gardener trait. This character likes nothing better than to put her away in the garden, growing herbs and exotic fruit trees. Absolutely. Now, this is just ridiculous, and I don't actually know what happened here, but there's a rebellion because we now have no vassal wars whatsoever. Every time that happens, the AI gets very skittish and declares war against someone. You can see it right over here. Uh, vassal war declaration illegal, and everybody rebels. They have 5k troops. Now, the Byzantines? 58k. Are you kidding me? What is happening here? Wait a minute, so am I getting this right here that the Varangian Guard exists? I didn't see the formation of the- yeah, okay, so the Varangian Guard exists, but I never got the formation event. They never formed as far as I'm concerned. When- since when did they ex what is this? What does it link up there? 849, I swear to god, I never got the event for the Varangian Guard, but here we are. You know what, that is fine. Okay, welcome Varangian Guard, I guess Alexios is leading you, I- your Sacalarius comes to see you one afternoon. He explains that he has devised a plan to bring in exotic goods by setting up a trade out of the foreign realm. This would of course require a sizable monetary investment, but the potential profits would also be great. 100% yes. I want a permanent trade route, please. Like, a permanent trade route. Time has come to purchase pack animals. I will purchase the most expensive ones that we can find. Word has spread that you're planning a trading expedition, and a group of priests have arrived at your court with a request. They're offering temple funds for the journey if you will allow them to come along the journey. Absolutely. Rise of the Shia, yet again. Oh no. This is actually going to be a very powerful Rise of the Shia if it succeeds. They have 57k troops. If they lose this, then they will never win. They're going for Arabia, meaning that Mecca and Medina them, uh, itself will actually be under the control of the Shia. This could be the first Shia uprising that is actually meaningful. Let's see how it goes. The expedition has finally reached the, rel uh, the realm of Shah Keikosrau. The steward asks you what gift we shall bring forth as a token of friendship. You know what? Pretty neat. All the time we went up here, we went over there, but we never went over into the Mystic East, and we'll do that. I will give you a dozen strong horses. 
What? We just made 400 gold? I, I guess it's oriented on the monthly balance that we're making, but this trade route is incredible. Look at this. City tax, castle tax, tribal tax. Okay, no build, uh, no build speed. You know, I was wrong there, but my god, this is good. I will sustain this uh, this trade route, no doubt about it. Zagalaris has brought in riches to her realm through his competent handling of the trading expedition, and he probably expects to be rewarded with a share of the wealth. 80 bucks? Sure. Let's ask our liege for another title here, I think. He hasn't given us anything so far, so let's... Oh, we done it! What do you give me? County of Corinthos. Thank you so much, you fool. Are you kidding me? Oh, that is amazing. Man, the AI is really in love with giving us titles if I just keep asking. Thank you so much. I would love, by the way, to become the King of Crimea, but I don't think it's happening. Let's be really... Let's, uh, we need to take both of these provinces and then this province to be even eligible to create the kingdom. I kind of doubt that we're going to do that. That's a, that's a difficult one. If it... Okay, we're going to build a war chest here because this is definitely something that we can do in a reasonable time frame. The Holy Roman Empire, I wish they were in control of Galicia, but I like a super strong Galician Spain. Honestly, it works. It really does, especially because they don't actually rule Asturias. That is merely a tributary. My god, excuse me? What just happened here? So we have King Voislav II of House Volinsky with a, a, a Muslim icon for their crest? Any of this happen? Right, well, the Slavs are resurging, it seems, and I am very much threatened, but okay. Finally, my wife is pregnant. With our wife now being pregnant, we actually have a chance of getting a proper heir that is the son of Strategos Radagaisos. Now, of course, it is not that urgent because we do have Theokaristos here, who is a very decent person. I mean, look at this. He is very skilled in everything. But if I get my own son, I mean, you know, all the better, right? I have no money to spend on this nonsense, sure. And we have a daughter, Yulia. Yulia will be our heir, and I appreciate that, actually. That's quite the, the nice heir. Now, I would like a son, of course, but you, you gotta try what you can. And, and I like a daughter to directly inherit. And let's build another city right here, because with another city, our income will be huge, and that is exactly what I'm here for. You know what I just noticed? So we have been an advisor to the Byzantine Emperor for a long, long time. But I just noticed that there is a faction to put my wife on the throne, and how can I say no to this? How, ca how could I not support my wife, right? So what we are going to do is, I'm going to step down from being an advisor. I think I have to put it actually on his portrait, and indeed that is the case. Resign from council, there you go. I'm going to join this faction. Absolutely, are you crazy? How could I say no to this? Seriously. Let's do it. Anatolius the Just has called us into the Byzantine Revolt War. Okay, so how is this war going to go? Here's 19,000 troops. We have 22k. I'm going to join your war directly. Oh, I can't even do that, huh? Interesting, okay. Well, I will join this war directly by simply putting my troops behind them. Because I definitely want to support my wife's claim there. I think it is just, I think it is right. I think we shall push for our wife here. Ah, and there you go, Stephanos has been born, our son, who will even get a claim on the Byzantine Empire if all of this goes right, but my sister has sadly passed away. We're losing men every single day because of the attrition, but I think we are stronger than they are. Total numbers. I just really hope the, the AI doesn't ruin this, and I think right now the AI is ruining it. What is the AI doing? Are you seeing this? Oh, this is just maddening. I hate when they do this nonsense. Wow, we re-sieged a trade post. Are you kidding me? Oh, and we are being attacked. Here's the battle that will be remembered. The battle that decides over loss or victory. And it looks very dire so far, I will admit. I'm leading the center flank. I've had my eye on a feisty... No, get out of here. Fighting a war. Oh yeah, this is rough. Very, very rough. Oh, but there you go! And the defense wins it. Easy. Get absolutely destroyed. My wife will sit on the throne, even if my son won't, but I'm gonna figure this out. Oh god. Matters of life and death. I said no to it once. I'm not sure that I can say no to it twice. I think at that I think at that point I I would have said no too often. Well, I mean, I do have a son now, and he is very young, but I think this is worthwhile. You know what? With age comes wisdom, they say, or at least it may change the questions we ask, you mutter to yourself. You have had trouble sleeping lately, more often than not. While the rest of your court is sound asleep, you find yourself staring at the ceiling. You're getting older, each day closer to leaving this plane of existence. It is folly to fear such things, of course, yet you cannot keep these feelings at bay. Didn't you used to dream of grander things? What about your carving your own path? 
What happened to your ambitions? You sit up straight in your bed. This is ridiculous. You are the ruler. You have people ready to serve you at any whim. Perhaps your councils have ideas. If nothing else, it might ease your trouble sleeping. Summon the council. Yeah, this is what I thought. The council convenes and the faces of your advisors speak of confusion. Why are we here, my lord? It comes with a hint of concern. You sit down and the suspense is almost tangible as you leave the question hanging in the air. Finally, you speak and without disclosing much of your current nightly restlessness, you convey the message eloquently enough. I want to discuss the concept of life and death and I want to look into everlasting life. They nod slowly. So what do you think? Spirit rises in the room as your counselors start to talk, some hesitantly, some gesturing wildly. They all have ideas. Well, we are going to go uh, go with the idea of the spy master here because that is what we are good at. I think that is the most important thing. Uh, we're currently getting two intrigue from this. So I'm going to switch over to intrigue as soon as we can so we can get three out of it. I trust Mayor Sebastianos to handle this discreetly. Yeah, how it goes. Our rebellion appears to be successful. We just beat up their army. Let's see. This will Stop giving me this event about the common wench. I swear to God. I have the great pox. Why oh why does the game curse me like this? Really? I didn't do anything wrong this time around. Repulsive sores and abscesses are spreading across your body, originating from the groin. You have contracted the great pox. Wait, what? I just asked him twice, apparently. Something about it. I actually feel better. Hey, I get a choice? What? Darus entered the chambers with an earthenware jar cradled in his arms and came to sit by your bed. He pulled a leech from the jar and gave it a most tender look before carefully placing it on your face. Remain still, my lord. Better not disturb their feeding. Okay. So, I get the worst event, ultimately? I get both of them, huh? Oh, thank you, game. I get a plus one, all things considered. I guess I appreciate that. I'm not sure I do, but... Take it. <laughs> sure, whatever you say, game. Whatever you say. Promises in the dark. Your mysticos finds you in the night, startling you awake. Sorry, master, but the walls of ears. I dared not come during the day, he says. Somebody's on my trek. I could use some help throwing them off my scent. No, oh, no, don't worry. It means that we're getting close, he whispers, a confident smirk only just visible on his face. There's a legend, you see, and... Well, we're very close to locating a certain person who can help, but we're not the only ones looking for her. Pay for disguises, I guess, dude. Sure. Whatever you say, buddy. Whatever you say. The Battle of Thessalonica, and indeed it is a battle that is very harsh because I think we may lose this one. Galagaisus, you pompous, bro uh, pompous brood, a shout carries over the plains where I am fighting a close battle alongside my personal guards in the distance. I see enemy reinforcements coming our way. Listen, I begin to my soldiers. Uh, I think we're gonna go with aggressive leader here. That sounds about right. Inspiring leader may- actually, you know what? Let's go with inspiring leader. You know what we have that they don't? Each other. We're still gonna lose. Yeah, there you go. That's what I thought. That is exactly- yeah, we're gonna lose this one. That's- that's a rough one. That's a really rough loss. In particular because it actually, like, destroyed our army. Oh lord, I don't like this because we may go to prison for this. If we lose here, we- ah, okay, well. Not like this. One moment I'm shouting orders surrounded by the clanging of swords and fighting around me. The next everything goes dark as the world slips away from me. Are those people concerned faces? Everything hurts. I just want to rest. God damn it. Gategos Radagaisus of Cappadocia receives a crushing blow to the head and shows no sign of w waking. Well, so much for this, eh? No eternal life for us. I could still duel him, apparently. Um, curses, I guess. I think I'm gonna die here in a second. Yep. Just as I thought. Um, hello. For his wicked deeds, many scream not to bury Radagaisus with the other rulers of your lands, instead to toss him into an unmarked grave and without the proper services. May Radagaisus finally pay for his sins in the afterlife. I don't know about that, I, I have to admit, but okay. That title's returned to the actual emperor. Did okay. So we're now the Duke of Crimea, of course. We hold on to everything that we held on prior to this. We're still part of the rebellion. If we lose this, then we are screwed. I mean, primarily, we are already two years old, so this is just going to be a lot of... Nothing, essentially. And the rebellion will actually be a loss, it seems, in Neapol. Yeah, they, they're just sieging everything down. Wow, I really hate this, by the way. So our entire dynasty over here is gone now. They rebelled against him, they defeated him, and all of a sudden... It's all over. He just died, uh... I think he died before his child. Yeah, indeed he did. And then when he passed away, I assume... It fell back to the king and... How did it- how did it fall to Duke Altgar? I do not actually understand- oh, okay, seriously? Oh, that sucks so bad. That is so horrible. 
King Jacobo's made one bad marriage and now our faith and our family is gone. Yeah, I hate that. Now, I hope that this war will become a white piece or maybe a victory for us after all, although I highly doubt it. Okay, so what just happened here? I am imprisoned and I please not take my title. That is all I ask. Do not take any of my titles. I can't get any more money to do that quickly. I really, really am asking the Byzantine Emperor here to not revoke my title. Oh, he revoked Thrake, you son of a gun. Well, honestly, Thrake got sieged down the entire time. So the rebellion is lost and all we lost is Thrake, I believe. I don't think he can take anything else. At least I hope he can't. But losing Thrake isn't that bad. We got Corinthos instead and Corinthos is not constantly being sieged down. So that is quite nice. Well, we're still a duke. The worst, the worst case scenario here, in my opinion, would have been had he revoked Crimea and then given it to us as merely a vice royalty. But this way, this is this is all good. I'm not worried about this at all. We just revoked a tiny part. I just really hope that I can buy my freedom here because if I can't, then it's not going to be good for my health. And we will become Yulia if things go wrong. She has not been in prison, which is excellent. I am sick. Don't do this to me. Today, let's enter your cell. Winning from ear to ear, something experience has taught you is a very bad sign. Good news, one of them says cheerfully. Your orders from the dukes. You are to be set free after you have been blinded. Take a good look at this cell because it is the last thing you shall ever lay eyes on. Stay away from me. They just blinded a seven-year-old. The Byzantine Emperor Basileo Sebastianos, the monk, just blinded a seven-year-old. I am mad. And Duke Stephanos will never forget this. We will prevail. This is obviously horrible, but we will prevail. And I'm dead. I will not prevail. My god, Juliana! Julia, actually. You have to avenge your brother. You have to avenge your brother. This is outrageous. Absolutely horrible. They blinded him. Never again. Shall any Byzantine Emperor have this power over the Lords of Crimea? Never again. Now if I die right now, a Carling will inherit. Please don't do me dirty like this. After the very early success our house has fallen on dark times, we are one of only three members that still live. And these two over here are not even eligible for inheritance, it seems, at least from what I can judge. I can't really do anything about it. The Carlings are next. I mean, I can't let that happen. Any Carlings inheriting this land? No way. I will not let this playthrough end like this. I just need to live. I just need to live for the moment and then we can make everything happen. And we're gonna go here with diplomatic education, I think. She's not perfect for it because fuzzy is a negative trait here. But I think she'll turn out just fine. And I mean, look at her stats. She has pretty decent stats. If we turn out shrewd as well, that would be amazing, but... Can't always have everything, so let's just hope that this works out fine. I primarily need to live. If I live, we will be able to continue our campaign here. If I don't, then we are royally screwed. Oh, and Radelgar, that's a really nice potential marriage there, you know that? See, we could marry one of the Ashina. If we marry one of the Ashina, I could get their bloodline, which is really good, actually. But do I want to marry any of the Ashina? You know what? They haven't raided us in ages. And they aren't even the head clan anymore, so at this point, I feel like maybe we should marry one of the Ashina. Yeah, you know what, Araslan? Marrying you. Get on well with others, while some people only chase ambitions and get into needless conflicts. I have what I need right here. Well, now we know that I'm not going to do anything ambitious, like for example taking Australia with this character. I will merely build up. And that's good. We are playing for 700 years, right? So we need some downtime as well where we merely build up our lands. And I think she's the perfect candidate for this. What the f... I don't know what to say. How is he so powerful? Almost king of Greece. What? actual fuck <laughs> what okay whatever you say i i don't know what I, I, what and i have grown up i have finished my education and diplomacy i feel that i have truly found my calling the best way to keep one's word is to not give it ray eminence amazing and we're all so patient i love it when everything is in good order and i'm willing to spend the time that it takes one shouldn't rush things needlessly that's 
us go. Duchess Yulia is amazing. Thank you, Duchess Yulia. I swear to God, this is actually great. Um, what I would like to go with here, and I think she's content, right? So she's not going to go to war, hunting, or seduction, or intrigue. I think we're just going to go with business. Yet again, I just want to make money. What's the problem? You know, what? what's the big deal here? Come on now. Let's acquire another title. See, and now I'm, I'm looking at this, and I'm like, what the hell even happened here? Remember how two minutes ago, literally two minutes ago, there was this uh, unbeatable person here, this, this Bulgarian Taoist, and now he holds no titles? What actually happened here? I have no idea. There was a very strange episode of a Tao's priest ruling of everything. In the meantime, Louis Ta uh, Luz Lusitania is ruling over Iberia, but the Holy Roman Empire, I have the feeling, at least blobbed a little bit. I may be, may very well be wrong though. There is a rebellion going on as well. Austrasia, sadly, now under the Jerome Carlings, not under us, but it is what it is. You know, what can you do? Yeah. Norsemen haven't really done anything, have they? They haven't moved at all. The Kingdom of Italy. The e wait, what? The ancient Lombard Kingdom has a, what? The Kingdom of Italy. What do you mean by this? The ancient Lombard Kingdom was established in Italy after a long history of migration originating in northern Europe. Along the way, the Lombards themselves have changed, both influencing and becoming influenced by the regions they have settled. Now it has finally come to pass that the Lombard lands in Italy no longer have a Lombard ruler, and this effectively spells the end of the name of the Kingdom of the Lombards. We shall henceforth speak of the Kingdom of Italy, but the Lombard heritage shall live on. The war against Emperor Liberation of Lombardy. So essentially we had the Italians rebel against the Holy Roman Empire. And now the Holy Roman Empire is this? Amazing. Now we are one of the first truly orthodox people in our entire dynasty, honestly. Like, of, of course he wasn't Slavic, but he was a secret Slavic. And I think this is fine. Duchess Julia feels very comfortable in this, but we are going to uh, join the community of St. Basil. We are, for the first time ever in this playthrough, dedicating us to, uh, or dedicating ourselves to the idea of orthodoxy. There you go. Holy crap. After all this time, after all this time, they actually found a foot of a saint. Are you kidding me? After like 30 years, they found a level 1 artifact. I am so mad. The Order and Guard cares much for the souls of our members. As such, we would like to advise you to go on a pilgrimage, since you have not yet done so. Sure, oh, I will definitely go on a pilgrimage once I get rid of these fools down here. Or rather, actually, I can do it right now, I guess. Uh, up me. And we're going to go on a pilgrimage here, and I think this will be a good thing, because we've never done it in this entire playthrough, and of course there is another Byzantine revolt. No surprise there. I shall go on a pilgrimage to seek God's grace at one of the holy places of Christianity. Now I'm thinking, probably want to go to Antioch, because Antioch is one of the few cities that we Christians actually hold. Makes a lot of sense in my opinion. There's a star shining unusually bright in the clear sky. You see it every night, and its position coincides more or less with the direction of the destination of your pilgrimage. The Lord is showing me the way. We became zealous. Nice. We are actually the first character of this dynasty, truly of this dynasty, truly committed to orthodoxy. I love it, and I hate this down here, but don't worry about it. Antioch. You have finally arrived at Antioch. This is the oldest city of Christianity, the first place where people actually began to call themselves Christian. St. Peter and St. Paul both worked here, as did St. Ignatius. It is a place where early Christendom was formed and defined, and it later expanded from here westwards to Rome and beyond. As your feet tread the ancient tr uh, streets of Antioch, you can feel the history and tradition in the air around you. Great and ancient city, indeed. Oh, and look at that, I asked them yet again for a title and they gave us Pusa, which they actually just revoked, like literally just a second ago. They revoked this county and now it is ours. Now, with having a duchy that is a permanent duchy because it is primogenitor, I am now actually in the position of handing out some of these. And I think we're going to hand out, uh, but Prusa and Corinth. My fear is still that he could theoretically, uh, Leish could theoretically hand out vice royalties to my new vassals. Actually, you know what? This is absolutely wrong. I'm going to hand out Oleshi. And, yeah. Let's hand those out and let's just, you know, push us down. Actually, no. Let's not hand any of those out. You know what? I reconsidered. I want Arislan to grow up and then we're going to take a look at what our stewardship truly is and we go from there. Now I'm still not married, but you know what I am? I am very hopeful because as you can see, Kazaria just fell apart entirely. 
And I'm thinking if I can make some allies somewhere, which appears to be quite difficult, but if I could make some allies somewhere, I could possibly actually push into Kazaria. Oh, look at that. Georgia just went independent. I didn't even realize this. How did this happen? Aces, uh, good on you, I guess. I swear they went independent a while ago, but maybe they were. I just got it wrong. I would love to take Korchev. If we take Korchev, we have the entire... Oh, this is even better. This is even better. So we now have a claim on Korchev, and all I now need is an actual favor from our wonderful, wonderful Vasileos Belisarios, the Mutilator. Good name, by the way, but all I need now is a favor from him, because once we have that favor, we can ask him to go to war for us, and if he takes Korchev for us, that would be incredibly beneficial. Let's try to do that. It's not even like a an ambitious kind of activity here. It's just me taking what truly does belong to us. All right, so what I'm thinking is we do have a claim on it, and I wanted to have the Byzantine Emperor, you know, actually push that claim, but I think we're fine as it is. What we're going to do is, now that Kazaria has properly fallen apart, I'm going to declare a war for Korchev. Could go for all of Kherson, but I'll be honest with you, it's too risky because, then again, everybody is, like, in their own war, aren't they? Now, I'm going to declare a normal war. I think that is fine because I have to build up this province anyway so that it doesn't fall away from us. I'm going to claim Korchev and I'm going to hope that we can make this happen. But honestly, as far as I'm concerned, we definitely should be able to make it. Uh, if we can't, then, you know, so be it. I mean, what am I going to do about it? I'm not in a good position at all. And finally, we can marry Araslan. Thank you so much. Araslan is marrying us, Yulia the Tenacious. What a good name, first of all. But second of all, give me the money. And he does like me a lot, so I'm going to ask you to convert to our faith. And we're going to siege this down. We're going we're gonna to do this. I think this is doable. And then we will even have Theodosia as a proper safe county. And with that, the war is over. I'm just hoping. I'm not, I'm not going to end the war right now because we have our ally attached to us. And I want to beat up Bulan's host so that I don't have to deal with this. But the war is over. We will take Theodosia. And I think I have actually could have gone for the holy war there. I was just a bit cautious. And I think, you know, at the end of the day, it is better to be cautious than to lose it all. But look at this. Wonderful. And I don't think that they have the technology here to build... What we need to build um they have a solid zero i think i, I can't actually quite tell that that means may not be a zero but either way wait a minute i just have to hover over it i'm an idiot right okay no this is fine we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna uh, build a castle here from the ground up as long as our liege lord doesn't die and he's 58 god damn it but as long as our liege lord doesn't die this will be fine we we're gonna make it okay this entire peninsula is ours and it will forever be and with that, yet another episode comes to an end. I hope that you enjoyed this one as well. And I want to thank the members of the channel that are making videos such as this one possible. Namely, the Barons, Aaron, Stefan, the Richest T, Snywolf, Emma, Mello, Thomas, Lachlan, and Mitchell. Then, of course, also the uh, uh, wonderful Counts, Shifty, and Wombat. And last but not least, the absolutely beautiful Dukes, Suspicious Duck, Nathan, Knight of Squires, Kenneth, Lexo, Roboman, My Dad Left Me at Arby's, and Eric and Aiden. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you later, alligator.